nominations at Jet Space Magazine, ready to serve and spill and drink all the tea from New York's season nine premiere party. We're going to talk about all the best performances, the best moments, and our money shot of the week. Every week you can tune in for a new Ruminations episode and we will give you all of these segments. We'll mm-hmm. recap every single Drag Race episode the Monday following the episode. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about the best looks as our money shots. Money shot. Yes. Yeah. And they'll be airing on Monday because RuPaul's Drag Race is now going to be on VH1 instead of Logo on Fridays. Yeah, this is an interesting point of contention too, mm. especially among bar owners and bar patrons. Where Whereas when it, before it would air on Monday, it would give bars a lot of great business sure. that would normally be really slow otherwise. Right. But now that it's on Fridays, a lot of bars have been asking themselves, are we even going to play Drag well, Race? Because it would cut into our regular scheduled programming, mm-hmm. which is often drag anyway. Yeah. But I appreciate that some bars are still airing it just for the sake of the public. Sure. And to give us a place to watch it. But yeah, it's kind yeah. of a point of contention. And VH1, not logo anymore. Yeah. Just queering up VH1. Yeah. Maybe they'll make up like make it like a pop up video of RuPaul's Drag Race behind the music. Uh huh. Did they do I Love the '90s and all of that? Oh, I think so. I love the drag queens. <laughs> <laughs> that was so dumb. <laughs> I mean, I do love the drag queens, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, great, cool, cool. (laughs) Orion. Uh, Yeah. Tell me about your fave performance. My favorite performance was from somebody I already knew who's a great performer, but I was just even more impressed and taken away by Eureka O'Hara. Yes. Killed it. Came out and did It's My Time, which was like this disco gay anthem with hair for Jesus and this giant black overcoat, like ruffly overcoat with sequins on it. And it was beautiful just to watch her Mm -hmm. lip sync. And then she strips it all, takes the hair off, a la Roxy Andrews, and does this amazing number, like gets the splits multiple times. So much charisma, so much dance talent as she's saying to, Mm -hmm. or lip sync to booty. Big, big big booty, cause you got a big booty. booty. I don't. In like a figure skater outfit too. Yeah. (laughs) But, like, a tasteful one. Like, it was... I love that she's a thick queen that leans into that, Mm. you know, and is really, like, celebrating it and being all about it, but but in a way where her performance backs it up, too. For sure. Where she's like, yeah, I'm thick, and I can do the splits. Yeah, it's not just about her being big and saying, like, look at me, I'm big. It's like, I'm big, and I can move better than you can. Yeah. And she can. Absolutely. She was amazing. Yeah. How about you? Who was your favorite performer? Oh, MG, Sasha Velour Mm. killed it. Mm. It was like we were at her installation, like her own art installation performance. It wasn't even about RuPaul's Drag Race. It was just entering into her own creative vision. She came out in this skin tight white dress. um, And then all of a sudden there were projections that were happening upon her, her own face lip syncing to Sia's cellophane, um, which is so emotional and moving. And then there were just like, splashes of color around her, and she performed so big while standing still. Mm -hmm. And it was just this moment of owning the room, owning the space, but with so much creative vision that it really made me feel like she was a contender because of her originality. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And to see her use technology that way and with a creative vision. Yeah. It's really exciting to see Drag Race Queen's give more than just a stage performance. She she elevated it quite a bit. It's also really emotional watching her perform. She's such a charismatic, attractive stage presence that you just cannot take your eyes off of her. Yeah. Yeah. When someone can stand still and captivate the audience that way Mm -hmm. with facial expressions and artistry, it's just another level. Mm -hmm. So Sasha Velour was my fave. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Can't get enough. (laughs) Ryan. Yeah. What's your most memorable moment from the premiere party? My most memorable moment from the, pre- the premiere party is not necessarily broadcast. It's not something that they would want me to say, <laughs> but there was a big gaffe that I'll never forget as a result of this. So Alexis Michelle okay. was supposed to go on after Aja's performance. Aja performed to FKA Twigs, did an incredible job. She had these like gold water wings on, but mm. she worked it really well. 
Uh, and then As Alexis, opposed to all the other times that people wore gold water rings poorly. Yeah. Yeah. Like all of 2007. <laughs> and <laughs> those were dark days. Uh, no, but... Alexis was getting ready to perform afterward to Uh do a Chicago number, Mm. which is really fun with backup dancers, right? Her backup dancer comes out to start the show and is like waiting off stage or in the corner of the stage, ready to start. And they keep on playing the production manager, the stage manager, keeps on playing FKA Twigs over and over and over again. And this poor backup dancer is just sitting there like, when do I get to go? Ugh. Lady Bunny comes, or somebody, comes on the intercom and is like, stop the track, it's the wrong track. And everybody was just in mayhem, confusion. Ugh. Ginger Minge comes out, she was the hostess, tried to keep the dancer company, mm. make it feel better. Was really? the dancer in pose the whole time? Too? The whole <laughs> time. Until Ginger goes up to him and is like, hey, let's let's have banter. And he's like, oh, okay, let's banter. Aww. And then he goes back to the pose. I it hope took, he like, gets like time and a half or something. I agree. That's a lot. And also, like, I hope somebody else gets a severance package because that was, Yikes. That was a job. Yeah. That did not go well. Yeah. Alexis afterward performed really well. And I liked that she was a Broadway queen and gave us an actual number to watch with backup dancers. But yeah, that was, that was harsh. Yeah. That was a moment. Tell us your favorite moment. Okay. Peppermint, who again, to remind you is the first openly trans woman prior to the show. Um, and she came out and performed her own song, serving it up. But my favorite moment of that performance was she came out in this bubble, this transparent bubble um, the kind you like roll down the hill with, like a hamster or something. Um, and there are all these backup dancers around. <laughs> I roll down the hill in a hamster ball daily. And that's how I get this. Anyway, body. but I literally said out loud when I was watching it, is she going to perform in that bubble the whole time? And then it burst and then she came out of it and then she was blown away by like a Beyonce fan. Like, not, a, like not a, like a super fan, but like a wind tunnel <laughs> fan. But that was my fave. It felt like it was, like, symbolic or something, too, you know? Oh, yeah, like, like she's, shedding... She's, she's, like... Expectations, shedding limits. Word. Barriers. hmm Past. Yes. Yeah. And I imagine when I watched the performance, like, she was interacting with the backup dancers so well that I was like, oh, this is how she's going to be with a pit crew. Can you I? Know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Can I tell you that I had a I mean, you can. You can crush. tell me now. This is incompetence. Oh. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> this is just between you and me. Okay, I had a big crush on her backup dancers. Oh. Namely, well, I shouldn't say namely because I don't know the name, but chiefly this guy who's pequeño, a little shorter. With the tiny shorts? Mm, no, he had oh. pants on, mm. unfortunately. Mm. But, oh my God, he had a butt. Mm. Big, big booty. Mm. He was just so, he was an amazing dancer, very mm-hmm. talented. All of them were. Mm-hmm. And, oh, he was just a fine wine. Great. Yeah. So peppermint. Maybe he'll watching. burst your bub sometime. Mm. Know what I'm saying? Oh well. Mm. I mean, he's a, the only thing I like better than a bottom who can dance, which he clearly can, is like a top who can bottom. Oh. I guess. Okay, but listen, I've been watching Great British Baking Show, mm. and they help me determine a new identifier for myself. What is it? Soggy bottom. <laughs> Soggy bottom all the time. They're I like, thought you were gonna say spotted dick, and I, no. really, I was ready. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. Soggy bottom all the way, because they're always like, your tart looks amazing, but it has quite a soggy bottom, and I'm like, that's me. <laughs> soggy bottom right here. Soggy bottom. Soggy bottom. That's you. That is me. All right. Quite soggy. Quite the bottom. Is that like your drag name or just like your identity? My identity. Yeah. Deal. Cool. All right. All right. Soggy bottom, ladies and gents, and everyone in between. Speaking of soggy bottoms, mm-hmm. let's talk about our money shot. <laughs> yes. What's a money shot, Ryan? Uh, well, as we're going to use money shots, uh-huh. uh, money shots are going to be the best look of the week. Mm. So we're going to talk about hair, makeup, Clothes, all the styling in general, Mm -hmm. who we thought had the best look of each week. Word. Who was our money shot? Mm -hmm. Who's going to make that money? Mm. Yeah. (laughs) So that's the question. Mine was definitely Nina Medina Brown. Tell me why. Hands down. 
because she came in. Did you realize that right? <laughs> I did, after the fact. Okay. And I reveled in it for a while. Cool. Uh, Nina Benina is impressing me every single week as I mm-hmm. see more on her social media. She, I think, is the first queen to ever come out with a facial prosthesis. Mm-hmm. We've seen, like, accoutrement on the sides and fascinators on the top of the hair. But she had a dentifrice... Dentifrice. Yeah, that's the word. Dentifrice prosthesis. She had a fake mouth, is what I'm trying to say. That made her look like... <laughs> <laughs> like, do you floss with that? I don't... Is that what you, you wear to bed to could. not grind your teeth? I don't... It's multifaceted. Okay, a dentifrice. Like yeah. Proceed. Dentifrice is like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nina Benina came out with this prosthesis that made her look... Like a chimpanzee, like wow. the planet of the apes. Made yeah, that. and it was fantastic. It was I. D- I couldn't tell what was behind it. Like if there's right. like a social commentary, a social commentary on like against discriminatory comments that she's gotten before, right. or prejudice, or if it was just like this is me saying a big whimsical mm-hmm. fu to the audience. But it was really well executed. She painted it really well, and then really her nice. actual performance backed it up too. She was a really good dancer. Mm-hmm. So I thought her look was super memorable. Yeah. Really fun. Yeah. Yeah. How about yours? I'm just going to sound like the number one fan of Sasha Vlor because TBH, Sasha is my number one money shot as well. Mm. Her runway look was incredible. Just head to toe with all the red and the gold. It was very cohesive and put together and original. Um, and then, as you heard before, I'm just in love with her performance look as well it was simplistic but then had so much splashed onto her that it created this experience and it was such a great contrast she came out on the runway with this ornate beautiful headdress Mm -hmm. and the full-length gown Mm -hmm. and then on stage had this simple white frock that became a performance piece in itself you're a frock thanks Mm. i get that a lot Frock you. I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Ruminations on Jet Space Magazine. I am Marita. And I'm Ryan. And we'll be here every single Monday during Season 9 of RuPaul's Drag Race, serving and spelling and drinking all the tea for your pleasure. Tune in next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>